So if you're stuck as a junior developer and you don't know what it takes to become a senior developer, well, in this video, we will look into best habits and tips and what is actually the process that it takes you to become a senior developer going from a junior developer role. So in this tutorial, I want to outline for you all the skills that you should learn in order to get out of the junior developer role into like the path of actually becoming a senior developer. So personally, I've known so many developers that have been stuck for many years now on the junior developer kind of role without actually being able to move forward into like a mid level kind of developer or a senior developer. And in my opinion, it comes down to all like the habits that you build around you, and as well as like what you actually do on day to day and what actually your path or actually what are your goals in order to actually reach that level. So one of the most important stuff that a lot of developers fall through, but it's not all about the years of experience. While years of experience plays definitely a major role in the career or the path of a, like a developer. And when you say this is actually a senior developer or not, but it's not always a deciding factor. So what if, for example, a developer that spends five or more years at the same company at the same role without actually doing something out of the, it's like comfort zone or doing something challenging or trying stuff that he that didn't actually do for like the past five years in the same role? What if he has been like doing the same thing all day, every day, and that thing wasn't that complicated. So it's actually very relatively hard to be able to only count on years of experience. While we can go through something like achievements, what they have like the challenges they took around what they've been able to do while they've been like through this role for the past couple of years or something, uh, what they have built projects or what challenges they have solved issues they like help the company with or maybe were they able to actually mentor a junior developer and try to help him grow on his position. So in my opinion here, you always need to get out of the comfort zone every single day, you need to challenge yourself, learn something new, build stuff that you've never known you're capable of doing and take big challenges or take projects on your own. The second most important thing is going beyond coding. While code is most definitely a very important part of the process of being a senior developer or of like development process or whatever, but it's not always the deciding factor. It's not always the only part of that process. So there is actually a way much bigger cycle for senior developers that they should actually follow and go through. So as senior developers, before we actually start picking up a keyboard and start strongly typing on the keyboard, without ex exactly knowing where we are going to end up, like at the end, or we don't have any thoughts or ideas, what we're going to have our end goal, we need to first do some planning, some visualization, maybe some team grooming or stuff going through the tasks that I'm going to go through, maybe sl splitting that into like to do's and writing in just a pen and paper old pen and paper and trying to just figure it out myself before I actually start and jump into coding. Because coding is simply a visualization of our thoughts. Because when we think in a particular way, we actually start building and typing the code and putting it together in the same way we thought about. So if we have like a really bad kind of thinking, or we haven't been able to figure out an optimized way to think and have the optimal way to get our ideas out and visualize our thoughts, we're going to end up with a very defected, very bad code that it's not going to work most of the times from the first try, or maybe it's not going to be performance, or it's going to have tons and tons of bugs that are going to make your life a nightmare. So I personally like and absolutely adore just bringing a pen and paper and starting actually to put my thoughts together. So just, you know, a simple paper and a simple pen can make you visualize your thoughts better than actually typing it on a computer most of the times. So 95% of the times, all I need is a pen and paper. And I try to put my thoughts into this paper from diagrams or maybe putting to do's or maybe splitting text that I'm actually going to go through when I try to put the code to visualize my thoughts. Or maybe you need a little bit more advanced sort of tool that allows you to design and put the thoughts together, maybe like Figma, Sketch, or any other design tool. You also need to specialize and focus on your field. So to become a senior at something, it simply means that you know that particular thing very, very well 
inside out, you know, every small and big and teeny tiny thing about that thing that well. And the mistake that most of junior developers actually commit is always trying to learn stuff that doesn't actually need to be learned because they actually need to focus on a particular kind of domain, like for example, front end development with maybe some back end knowledge, or maybe they want to just focus on design with front end development, but you don't need to actually go through all of the stuff. You simply can't actually learn and master everything. You can't like learn and master design with front end, back end, mobile development, DevOps, whatever the other thing it is. It's not that easy. So only pick up one thing like front end development or back end development and focus on it and become a master in that field. And obviously, over the time, you can learn small stuff from other things like DevOps, how to deploy a simple website, but you don't need to go through and how to build a fully established infrastructure on AWS from, you know, zero to hero, while you are a front end developer, and you're just a junior front end developer, that you haven't just mastered your field just yet. The fourth one is clean code is a gem. And most of the time, clean code is an absolutely superior principle that most of us as junior developers, or maybe even senior developers, underestimate a lot. Well, in my opinion, a very good senior developer should know how to write and put a really good tied up, simple, easy to read and maintainable clean code. And obviously, they should know the principles and should be able as well go through these principles very easily. Writing bad and readable code is the worst thing to do because it simply will cost you time, money, and some of your sanity over time. So the best way to shine up among other team members and actually be able to help your team and your company is by writing clean code and make sure your code is as readable as it could be. So there are plenty of books out there that allows you to be able to learn these principles and actually apply them on real world projects and while you're coding. So one of these books, what I really enjoy is like the clean code book. So I don't have it in here. I always use my Kindle and read it online. But yeah, it's clean code. It's a really, really awesome book that allows you to see the principles from inside out. And it gives you every single detail you need to be able to write clean code eventually. And the second one, which I read just a couple of like months ago, which changed completely my mind is the programmer's brain, which is an absolutely beast of a book. It's a very small book, but it has tons and tons of ideas and ways to split code and make it more readable and how to write variables. It's absolutely amazing. And the last one is mentorship plays a major role in self confidence and self growth. So when you know a topic or you know something, and maybe you don't know it that well, so when you take that topic and try to teach it and be able to make somebody else learn from you that topic, you actually benefit a lot than you think. And there is a term for this kind of effects, which called the potage effect. This is a term called for when doing or teaching or helping others with something or a particular topic can do us actually more than we can imagine. When we mentor somebody or help them or teach them on a particular topic, it allows us to become masters of that particular topic. So why is that maybe you're wondering, it's simply because when we teach or help others to grasp on or master and learn a particular topic that we just learned, or maybe we already know from before, our minds as humans memorizes that particular topic far better then we wouldn't have like got it from the way we learned by ourselves. And this kind of thing allows us to become far more smarter and a kind of like a master in that particular topic. That's why you find a lot of people when they like teach stuff and, and actually help other people, they actually grow up by just helping people and making them like learning topics or learning particular kind of a programming language, or helping them solve a bug, or something of that sort. Of course, it's not only us that we're going to get the actual beneficial help, or obviously other developers or other junior developers, or other colleagues that actually they can benefit from our thoughts and we can share thoughts between each other's and this can help us grow a lot. So personally, speaking about myself in here, this YouTube channel and helping people learn to code and solving problems, building projects and stuff 
kind of like helped me tons and tons of a lot more than what I learned online. Because when you try to teach somebody something, you gotta go ahead and look deeper, look everywhere, know every single teeny tiny bit about that topic before you can actually teach that topic. And there has been some studies actually going through like how our mind kind of memorizes stuff and how it does particularly memorize stuff a lot better when we try to teach other people and how does this affect us as actual developers and how we can actually use this particular technique to grow ourselves and help others as well. So without further guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you know any other awesome tips or habits that you should want to share with us, please let me know in the comments to learn from you guys as well.